Hi, it's Diane, and I'd like to share a journal with you. Um, I finally opened an Etsy store. I'm kind of nervous about it. Um, I haven't sold anything, and I, I just, I'm not really sure how everything works, but we're going to go for it. So uh, I'm going to offer this in my Etsy shop, which is called Pretty Pink Cottage. And this one is a masculine vintage journal. There is vintage ephemera in here and some that um, just looks vintage and I will point out the genuine vintage pieces. The book was made with a book cover with this beautiful gold design on it. It was a, a mystery novel called The Spy's Wife and I liked the, co the design on the cover so I used that. I took the book apart because I, I needed it to be wider, the spine wider than it was and so I created a spine and this is um, a nice quality of cardstock that has been embossed that wraps around. This was a library book and so there was there were tape markings here and I had to cover them up and I used a piece of this gold striped paper and then put some of the gold looking um, corner pieces on and a gold hitching hitch fastener with one of the Tim Holtz fastening elastics. And on the back, the tape markings went further into the cover, so I just put a strip of that paper around it. And so let's go inside. It's got three signatures stitched in with black waxed linen. I don't know if it's waxed, but it's a black cord. And I used gold and blue papers and coffee dyed papers. I stamped what this book belongs to on a scrap of coffee dyed paper and glued that on here. It is re reinforced on the spine with Tyvek underneath this black. And then on the inside I covered up the cardboard with um, this tan colored duct tape. So the first signature begins with this coffee dyed pocket stitched onto a plaid paper. And this is a vintage lotto card. But I didn't want to add bulk to the book, so I just peeled the first layer of the cardboard off and stitched it on. And then there's one of the Tim Holtz paper doll figures. And then this um, is not real vintage, but it came from a vintage piece. I have these two pieces, and I made copies of them on my printer. And um, then I used my die cutting machine, my Big Shot, and some various dies and cut shapes out of those pieces of paper and then um, distressed around the edges with vintage photo and a little bit of black soot. So you'll see some of those pieces throughout the book and this is one of them and I put some eyelets in the little holes. Inside, someone sent this to me. This is a copy of a 1910 list. It's not genuine vintage but it was distressed very nicely. She sent me several of these copies. And then this is a 1979 first, what do you call them, first um, edition stamp or something. But anyway, it's a 1979 John Paul Jones stamp there. Pick that up at an antique store. And then there's some stamping throughout the book. This is vintage ledger paper. And this is a vintage Rook card that someone sent me, and I punched a hole in it, put this little light bulb pin on it, and then a little tag that's coffee dyed, and I used Tim Holtz um, rub-ons. There are some rub-ons throughout the book that came from this Tim Holtz, and also uh, I have this gold and silver pack, and I used the gold, some of the gold ones. And I'm sorry, this is a vintage um, library card catalog card. I did a little stamping on that ledger paper. Here's a piece from the copy that I made and then I stamped this and cut it out. I have some cigar bands in here that someone gave me and this is a Tim Holtz um, sticker. This is vintage paper from the Lehigh Valley Railroad Company and then this is just glued on here. I don't even know what this came from but someone sent that to me with, I think it came with um, my flow journal from Don Calvin. 
and I really like the way it looked. It came all torn like that. I just put a little ink on it and then glued it on with one of the Tim Holtz figures. And this is a vintage refund order from the railway company from 1927. Came from this book that I bought at a flea market. And um, it has these little stubs from the tear off things and I use some of those too in the book. In fact, one of them is right there with another cigar band. And then this is from a vintage appointment book, just a little little appointment book. So that is uh, vintage also. There are cigar band wrapped around there. This is a Cavallini bag that someone sent me and a tag tucked in there and a card with some gold embossing. And this is a vintage stamp, Project Mercury. Some stamping up there. Vintage ledger paper from the 1930s from an office in Tawanda, Pennsylvania. Coffee dyed paper with a stamp on it. I formed a pocket here. Um, this cutout die cut was sent to me and this is from my Big Shot machine. And it's made with a coffee dyed manila file folder and it says proceed as if success is inevitable. Here's one of the Tim Holtz figures and a Tim Holtz clock. And here's a copy I made of the Apprentice membership card for the Elmira Stereotypers Union number 69 from 1914. This is just a copy, but I used um, ink on it and I have a stamp that stamps these speckles. And I thought that turned out pretty nice. In the centers of the book, of the signatures, I used, these are Tim Holtz um, little cutouts from this little piece of paper. And I used um, Tim Holtz stickers on the other ones. And here's a piece that I made with a vanilla, manila file folder and this one also. And this is a little vintage greeting card. This is from Ephemeris Vintage Garden. And this is from Tim Holtz Packaging. It's got vintage ledger paper on that side and a Tim Holtz photograph there. And again, the camera's vintage garden tag. And then this is a vintage game score sheet from um, Clue, a vintage Clue game. This was cut with my Cricut and stamped and it's got a couple of eyelets here. There's a stamp there. This one is coffee dyed paper and I had also coffee dyed some of these blue cards and apparently laid this on top of it in, in the process somehow, somewhere. So it's got a little bit of a blue tint there. I think it looks kind of neat. And this is a piece of Prima paper that's stapled on there with some copper staples. This is a vintage bridge score sheet and then a little piece of fiber paper, a piece of the um, copy that I made of the vintage telegraph paper, and then just some bits and pieces there. I did a little bit of background stamping. I don't know if you can see that little mesh design there. And this stamp here, I stamped the number and then I stamped with this vintage stamp that I picked up at a flea market right across it. This is vintage tickets, a piece of a vintage book, part of the vintage clue score sheet, and a vintage clue card. And this was a silver frame, and I uh, uh, inked it up with alcohol inks. Second signature, this pocket has uh, a camera on it from a 1970 Sears catalog that Julie Mangold sent me, and some Tim Holtz stickers, a coffee dyed card with a tab, and then this little piece of paper is punched. The le vintage ledger paper. Um, I like the way this little collage turned out with a, a little tiny tuck spot for this card. Nothing here is vintage, it's just made to look vintage. I put a little blue ink around the edges of this so that it wouldn't blend into the page too much. Look at that beautiful staining on that coffee dyed paper. I love the way that turned out. This is stamped with some um, 
Stampin' Up! Alphabet Stamps. I think it's called Graffiti, and it's a uh, retired stamp set. This is vintage. This is just copy dyed paper. These are vintage stamps that someone sent me. Someone also sent me this little bag. I glued it on as a tuck spot. There's a tag in there. And this came from Jenny Bolin, I think. There's a sheet of those perforated cards. Make Every Day Extraordinary. Vintage Ledger. I love the pink and lavender colors in that. And here's a Tim Holtz card. Here's some of that gold rub-on. And another Tim Holtz card. And this is from a vintage pharmacy student's book, notebook. Albany College of Pharmacy. Um, this one doesn't have a date on it. This was just used as scratch paper, but I think that some of them were dated 1920s, 1927 or something like that. But that's a very vintage piece of paper. Here's the center with Tim Holtz stickers on the strings. I was purchasing some vintage photographs at a flea market and this one was torn and he just gave it to me for free. I thought it looked pretty neat in this book. Someone sent me this uh, image of a vintage Chicago United Airlines poster and there's a vintage piece of paper on the back. Here's a vintage playing card that someone sent me. Don't even know what kind of a game it is. And there's another cigar band and just some pieces here. There's some stitching. There's a lot of stamping. Um, vintage ledger paper. Here's another vintage playing card. And I put on the Tim Holtz. I forgot what they're called. But um, it's got a little clock on it little clock charm and this is a vintage postcard Hotel Martinique and it's postmarked 1948 it's written on this is a stamp and some ruffled pleated paper vintage stamps up here there's a rub on this is a vintage paper typewriter and again stamped with this vintage stamp I have two of them, so I think I use both both of those stamps in this book. This is a good card to put a photograph on. And again, a lotto card that was peeled to make it thinner and more supple so it wouldn't make the page too stiff. And another one of those refund orders from the railway book, the little coupon book. This is from the railway co another railway company, and I believe this, when I see the date on these, I think it's 1912 or something like that. Yeah, this particular page doesn't have the date on it, but it came out of a book, and I'm pretty sure it's 1912. And there's some more gold rub-on, another cigar band. The 1930s, this is a stationary sheet, a full full-size sheet just folded up and a vintage dictionary piece and then these are some stickers from this Tim Holtz industrial sticker sheet that someone sent me and there's a photograph of a Tim Holtz gentleman in there and this is folded up piece of paper from a vintage composition book and there's a vintage photograph in here it's one of those stiff ones look at that gentleman there from Binghamton, New York, which is about an hour away from me. Vintage ledger paper. This came from a book. Uh, I don't even know what the name of the book was, but I love that image, and I just used some scraps inside it to make a little booklet. Another Tim Holtz gentleman there, stitched on as a pocket. Some Tim Holtz stickers in the center. Um, a vintage postcard of Mark Twain's summer home, Quarry Farm, East Hill, Elmira, New York. And a vintage photograph of San Diego Fair, August 18, 1935, I think. This is from this book, Vintage Radio, and I stitched it to some cardstock to make it stiffer, put a reinforcer on it, 
punched a hole, put a reinforcer on it, a little paper clip, and a little tag with some rub-ons. And then this is a page out of the book. And a little scrap of ledger paper that's just folded up and tucked in here. This is just stapled on. And here's a piece of that pharmacy student's book, just glued on as a decoration. This piece of ledger paper forms a couple of pockets here. There's a little tuck spot here. And then this is one I made. I have this piece of vintage ephemera, and I just made a copy of it front and back. So you can see the writing on the back, and then glued it together and folded it up. I folded it on the crease lines that are visible on the paper. So, And this is vintage pharmacy uh, prescription. Some stamping, vintage ledger. Yeah, 1919 is this paper here. And a little banner, some stamping, and then another card for photographs, and a library card, card catalog card. And then this is copy dyed library pocket with rub-ons and a copy dyed library card. So I will be listing this on my Etsy shop and I'd be interested in any feedback on it and I hope you all enjoy this book. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.